In June of 2022, I ran Grandma's Marathon in 303.53, was it? 303.53? Just do an asterisk if it's something different on the side. Shortly after that, I got back on the horse through the summer into the fall to run Chicago in October, where I finally broke the three hour barrier. And I've been chasing that for like five years. So how did I PR two times in the marathon this year? I wanna break that down today and go over my training schedule for the beginning parts of 2023. Been trying to go after a sub three marathon for about five years now. The first two years in 2017, 2018, I had no idea what I was doing. I relied on my natural athleticism, thinking that sure, I could run under seven minutes a mile. Why wouldn't I be able to do that for 26.2? In that process, I was humbled quite a bit, two times, two years in a row, until in 2019, I finally enlisted the help of my friend Dan to help coach me to get closer to that three hour barrier. And while I didn't actually cross it in 2019, I still came down to a 310.55. And that year, things changed because I actually learned how to put a training block together and how to be consistent in getting more miles on my legs in that training block. I realized that slower running and more of that slow running actually was helping my body become more efficient as a distance runner, namely a marathon runner. A lot of people in my Chicago Marathon video asked, how'd you go from a 350 to a 310? And that was it. It was understanding how the marathon works. It was about marathon training. It was about volume on my legs, lower heart rate in the process. And on race day about nutrition, electrolytes, carbs, and all that stuff on race day. I'll talk more about that stuff in the future, but today I really wanna talk about what I'm building for 2023 and the training block that I'm preparing for myself leading up to a marathon on April 8th in Carmel, Indiana. Surprise, I'm running Carmel Marathon in Indiana, April 8th. Through a quick Google search on uh, marathons to run in the spring in the Midwest has popped up and a lot of people recommend it for being super flat and a place where they say on their website over 22% of their finishers qualify for Boston. I don't know, it feels like a really good spring race for me and something um, that I can do that's fairly local. I've already signed up for a half marathon in May, the same one I ran this past May with a bunch of friends out in the suburbs of Chicago. I really wanna go after these two goals really hard, but first the marathon in April. And how I'm going to do that and build to hopefully get under two hours and 50 minutes in the marathon this time is you guessed it, volume. For a few years now, training by myself and having the help of a coach last year, I've kind of been going back and forth on Advanced Marathoning Edition 3, a book um, that someone recommended to me along the way and looking at their training plans in the back of the book. Now they have a multitude of different training plans, anywhere from four weeks, eight weeks, 12, 16, and how many miles you wanna put on your legs each of those weeks in that certain amount of time. This time I'm going with that 12 week plan and trying to get in that window of 70 to 85 miles a week in this training block. I've never done that before. I've always been a guy that's in the 45 to 65 mile a week training zone. So it's gonna be really interesting to see this spring as I build uh, my aerobic fitness in this training block, how this volume is going to affect me and my legs. It's the first time I'm ever doing a training block where there will be AM and PM workouts multiple times a week. It's gonna be incredibly challenging being a father of four and married, having a full-time job being an entrepreneur. But now with the help and listen on this channel with my buddy Shua who helps film and edit these videos, I'm hoping that I'll have the extra time to be able to get after this and we'll be able to document the process of that entire training block. So I'm screen recording here. And um, again, this is an adapted version of the training plan from Advanced Marathoning, the book I mentioned. And uh, the first few weeks are just kind of, you know, hobbled together. I've been building back up this month. December is the least amount of miles I've run all year in 2022. Um, just kind of took some time off, enjoyed the holidays, but very quickly got out of shape, put on more weight, haven't been eating well. It's time to get back on the horse and get back into this. Been slowly building back up mileage and getting myself back into a place where I can start approaching 40, 50, 60, and up to 70 mile weeks. Every week I've been adding five to 10 miles and in the hopes that at week 12 out from the marathon, I can get a 55 mile week and start working my way up to 87. So if we have a look here in this column, this is how many miles a week I plan on running. So this last week of December, I'm gonna put in 32 miles. I'm eight miles in right now. Um, so I have 24 left between a couple recovery runs and another medium long run of 10 miles on the weekend. And as you can see, the weeks go by, I'm gonna be ramping up about 10 to 15 miles every week. From 32 this week to 45 next, 55 the next after that, and then I'm in the advanced marathoning training block. 66 miles up over 70 to 72, 75, 77, and then peaking out at 84 to 87, and subsequently over 80 a few weeks after that, and tapering down 
to 70, 54, and 36 on race week. I can't tell you how excited I am to try this. Uh, I think it's gonna be incredibly difficult. I don't think I'm gonna hit my mileage every single week, just knowing who I am and how busy I am and how chaotic my life can be but I want that to be the target, to see how I can handle it. We're working on a video right now that talks about how I ran 300 miles in one month back in 2020, doing a whole really cool video about that, but I've never really gone over 70 miles a week since that time. And I remember at that time, that was some of the best shape I have ever been in. Knowing that I have the experience that I have now, the miles on my legs over the years, and uh, just the intuition I have as a runner, and the knowledge and wisdom I've gained over the past five years, I'm really excited to see what high mileage like this does to me and how ready I'm going to be to attack sub 250 come April 8th. So you'll notice in a lot of these weeks, there are multiple recovery runs, usually three spread throughout the week with Sunday being the first one, Wednesday being the next one and Friday being the last one most of the time. And in that there's sprinkled in medium long runs and long runs on the weekend. So a lot of the medium long runs go from anywhere from 12 to 15 miles and the long runs getting up to 17, 18, 20, and my longest being 22 on week five. You'll notice that on pretty much every week in this training block, there's only one hard workout, either labeled as LT for lactate threshold or VO2 max workout. Those are two different styles of workouts and different intensities. But the reason for only doing one, maybe two of those workouts a week is I don't wanna stress my body a ton multiple times throughout the week if I'm doing high mileage like this. It's really important to do those quick and hard workouts because it extends your fitness and makes you faster, but you need to be recovering after those workouts and you need to be able to maintain that mileage and volume and that's usually only done through slower paced miles. So anytime you see recovery or gen aerobic, or long run, I'm running those at much slower paces than the lactate threshold workouts and the VO2 max workouts. I'm sure I'm gonna break this down throughout the year a whole lot more as I go week to week and we kind of use this channel as a journal for my process of going sub 250. And I will go in depth on more of these workouts as we do that, but I hope that this video is just a little bit of insight and information into you know my world of running and what it looks like for me to be a marathoner right now and a hobbyist marathoner at that. I did qualify for Boston technically in Chicago this year, so I'm hoping Hoping to run it in 2024. I really want to keep challenging myself in the marathon distance now that I feel like I've un unlocked this new thing within me. And something I didn't mention earlier and something that was very, very different this year was I finally figured out gels. I finally figured out nutrition, something unlocked in my brain where I always knew about the wall. I always knew about at mile 18 to 22, everybody runs out of gas and they fall apart. But that's because if you're not putting enough calories into your body throughout the race, you're going to hit that wall because you need to be replacing that glycogen that you're burning in your body. And fast carbs are the best way to get that glycogen in your body to burn in the middle of a marathon. You burn 100 calories every mile you run, so it makes sense that at 20 miles, uh, you're burning out because your body can only hold 2,000 of those calories at a time. So you have to be supplementing the, that calorie intake throughout the race. And I finally figured out a gel strategy uh, that worked for me. Gels that didn't upset my stomach, not using honey stingers like I used to in the past because that wasn't enough calories for me. And moving over to spring energy, which gave me enough calories throughout the race, enough caffeine throughout the race to break through the wall. Um, I still had an upset stomach and threw up at 23 but it got me through and got me under three hours. So I'm gonna to continue to use that strategy this year, whispering energy, continuing to put enough calories in my body on the marathon race, and hopefully we're gonna go sub 250 this year. Hope this was helpful or fun or whatever. If it was, leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll catch you next time for runs. See you.